Hey, welcome to Graphic Policy Television, GPTV. I'm Brett. It's Wednesday, which means it's a brand new comic book day. Comics are hitting the shelves all across the world, digitally, physically. It's like the best day of the week because there's new comics hitting the shelves. I mean, it's kind of like a no-duh awesome day. So I'm reviewing three more trades out from DC Comics. Now you'll see I don't have them in my hand, but I've read the individual issues and I flip through the digital stuff uh, when it comes to the trades as well. But we're going to just mainly focus on the story, the, the, the art, and, well, really, that's it. We're not going to talk about the, the extra back matter just because I don't remember what that stuff is. Um, you know, first and foremost, I always want to say DC Comics has hooked us up with free copies. So, you know, take that in uh, consideration when weighing how much uh, you want to actually, like, believe me and how full of shit I am. Uh, so there's three new releases. we got Justice League of America, Cyborg, and The, the Lost Boys. Um, three very different comics in, like, what they have and, well, just how good they are. Uh, so let's actually start with Justice League of America. I apologize. I'm going to do a little reading off of a uh, computer, so I'm not going to be staring at the computer or the, the camera a whole lot. you got to, you know, read below. So Justice League of America Volume 1 is um, uh, called uh, The Extremists. Written by Steve Orlando with art by Filippi uh, Watanabe, uh, Diego Neves, Andy McDonald, Eau Claire Albert, Julio Ferreira, Scott Hanna, Roy Jose, Mark Derry, and Ivan Rice and Joe Prado did the uh, some art and cover art. Uh, collects issues one through six of the brand new series with a retail of sixteen ninety nine. So price wise, it's looking pretty good. So this is the new Justice League of America, very interesting uh, grouping that's going to take on uh, the extremist self-proclaimed saviors from another Earth. Uh, they're, they thirst for peace, prosperity, total submission to the will of their leader, Lord Havoc. How can the newly assembled JLA stop this group of misguided maniacs before the extremists unleash their own unique and dangerous brand of law and order on our chaotic world? Well, that's what the first volume basically uh, tackles and takes on. Uh, so for those who don't know this team, it's an interesting one. You know, Batman is basically put together. Uh, he feels like there's a, a different team that needs to uh, occur that's more, uh, we'll say, grounded than the Justice League. The main Justice League is obviously very godlike. You've got Wonder Woman, you've got Superman, literally characters that can, like, move planets. And uh, he feels that, you know, we need a, a Justice League that, well, reflects America. Hence the Justice League of America. Um, to say an interesting team is, uh, well, an understatement. Includes um, uh, the Ray, which uh, is a nice improvement of the character. I, I kind of dig uh, this new version of him. We got Black Canary, Vixen, um, Killer Frost, the Atom, and Lobo. Yeah, really interesting mix. I mean, you got Lobo, you got Killer Frost, and a lot of this spun out of the Justice League Suicide Squad storyline, and I think the series would probably make a little bit more sense if you've read that storyline. If you haven't, you can definitely start with uh, this series, but uh, getting the background with some of these characters and, and the story I think is very, very helpful. Uh, or if you've read the one-shots leading up to this, they're also very helpful. I mean, basically, Batman is uh, is either you know paying folks like the... You know, Lobo, who doesn't want to admit he wants to do some good, or is trying to reform people like Killer Frost. And I think Steve Orlando does a really good job kind of balancing these very different characters, their personalities, and, uh, and you know, and, well, dealing with each other. I mean, it's this is a strange group, and it works pretty well. Um, you know, I'm not going to, I'm going to say it's actually better than the Justice League that's currently out, but it still isn't quite blow me away. I think Steve's uh, done a lot better work elsewhere. It's not saying this is bad at all. It just takes it took a little bit for me to get into it. Uh, the first couple issues didn't quite blow me away, and then afterwards I started getting into the groove and enjoying it. Uh, once you kind of like get that vibe as to what the series is like, um, you know the the Killer Frost kind of through redemption story I think is is interesting. Lobo is well Lobo. I mean he's the main man, the, the head bastitch. Um, yeah. So if if you didn't enjoy Lobo uh, throughout the years. Um, you're probably not going to like him here. But what uh, Orlando, I think, does really well is he doesn't uh, Deadpoolize him, so he doesn't take the kind of the crazy uh, character and and um, and kind of change him for the team. I mean, Lobo is Lobo. He's still a sexist pig uh, and clashes with other members, and exactly as he should. So uh, that way I really, really enjoy it. I mean, basically... Uh, the, the story's good. Like, it, it's a good first arc. Um, you know, the series overall, I think, is kind of getting better as it goes along. There's there's a nice uh, overarching story going there uh, and, and kind of 
uh, it's entertaining. It's not maybe a top tier uh, book for me in DC Comics, but it's still a very, it's a good book. Let's go with that. Uh, so it's one, if you haven't checked it out, it's worth checking out. Uh, the art is, is good, it's entertaining, I think, you know, there, there's some good spots, there's some bad spots, but overall it's kind of feels like the writing, it's good, it's the best way of putting it, like, this doesn't blow me away, but it overall is good, like, yeah, that's, we'll, we'll kind of, like, leave it at that. Um, our next book up is Cyborg, Volume 2, Danger in Detroit, uh, this covers issues 6 through 13, retails for $19.99, so a couple bucks off. Uh, written by John Semper Jr., art by Paul uh, Pelletier, Tony Cordos, Simon Kudransky, Cliff uh, Richards, Alan Jefferson, and art and cover by Will Conrad. Uh, with the fearsome high-tech terror cell threat to invade the country, Cyborg participates in the creation of an experimental cybernetic female counterpart named, uh, codenamed Variant, whose abilities might exceed his own. But when the process ravages her memories, Cyborg must retrieve crucial national security secrets from her mind before it's too late. What's on the line? Control of the nation's most powerful nuclear weapons that could start a new world war. Um, I haven't been too hyped on Cyborg as a whole. I think there's just something missing about the series. Um, you know, there's kind of like a ghost in the shell aspect of it that we've seen before. You know, this overall story kind of feels like war games with a twist. Uh, you know, it, it, this is a lower tier DC book. I'm going to be straight out honest. I'm not enjoying it. Um, I just, I just don't think it has the imagination it should. Um, Cyborg today with, you know, uh, you know, people being so tied to their cell phones, being tied to virtual reality, ARGs, uh, you know, heads up, you know, wearables. You know, I think there is a, a more interesting story to tell involving all of that. Because basically, while this is going on, you have a person who has all this technology on them. In an interconnected world, um, There, are, I think there's just a lot more that can be said that's interesting and engaging. And on top of that, you have a African-American uh, main character who should be maybe like 20-ish around this point. So, um, you know, the, the series, while every so often reminds you of that, I don't think it kind of dwells on that too much where it should be a very key thing. I mean, this is a character who should be a member of the Titans or Teen Titans, though he's a little too old for Teen Titans. Uh, but overall, I just I, got, I think there's just missed opportunity with this. I guess he's probably not 20. He's probably mid-20s at this point. Um, it just doesn't blow me away. I think there's, uh, as, while it's not bad, it's just, it's not good, and I can't recommend it, especially for nineteen ninety nine. Um, yeah, it's a bummer, because the last previous vol volume from the New 52, I really liked it. Um, I liked where it went, but with this volume, where, where it immediately started, it just felt like we've seen it and done it and didn't say enough interesting things about it. Um, the art's good. Uh, there's some good points, there's some low points. But overall, it's it's good. It's kind of like Justice League of America. It's good. Doesn't quite blow me away. There's there's some solid stuff about it. There's kind of some weak spot stuff about it. Um, yeah, that, that's where we're gonna go with about much. Yeah, that, that's it. We're, we're gonna go with that. Uh, finally, this one's from uh, DC Comics. I believe Vertigo. We have the Lost Boys, follow up to the awesome cult classic film. Collects issues 1 through 6, retails for uh, $16.99 by Tim Seeley, Scott Godlewski is on art, and Tony Harris does the cover art. Uh, stakes are raised in this nostalgic and unstoppable sequel to the 80s cult classic vampire film, The Lost Boys. Santa Clara, California is on edge. The eccentric coastal town and haven for the undead was finally returning to normal after its last supernatural scuffle left the local covers the coven's head vampire dead and gave newcomers Michael and Sam Emerson a housewarming, uh, both violent and bizarre. Now the brothers must team up with the militant vampire hunters Edgar and Alan Frog when a new gang of ruthless, stunning, life-sucking night crawlers known as the Blood Bells emerge to collect Michael's love interest and their lost sister. As I said, collects issues 1 through 6 for $16.99, so a decent price uh, for the trade compared to the single issues. Uh, I like this. I'm a huge fan of the original... Uh, Lost Boys, so I was a fan going into this, uh, and this didn't disappoint me at all. I believe there's some other comics that came out. I've never read them, so uh, I have nothing to compare it on, but this is awesome. It really feels like a good sequel. It feels like a good follow-up. I would love to see more of this world. I would love to see more stories told in it, um, and it captures, I think, a lot of the fun and nostalgia that I have of uh, of the original film, like 
the, the look of it, the characters, uh, Scott Godlewski, I think, captures all the characters really, really well. Um, you know, the Corys come up quite well. They come through it. Uh, I totally don't remember who the main uh, brother was played by, but I have them in my head and picturing them. Uh, everyone looks like the characters. It's, it's a solid comic, adaptation, sequel, whatever you want to call it, to a classic cult film. If you liked that film, you're going to like this trade. You should definitely go out and get it. Uh, if you've never read The Lost Boys, you're going to read this and be like, I have no idea what the hell's going on or why this is a thing. Uh, so definitely see the film. If you've never seen the film, go see the film. This is just like a cult 80s schlock fest awesomeness of vampires. Um, and then go read the comic. Best way of putting it. So overall, we've got three trades. Uh, Justice League of America, I think it's generally a buy. I liked it. It didn't quite blow me away, but if you haven't read it, this is worth checking out. Uh, it's, you know, a different take on a superhero team. Uh, Cyborg, Volume 2, going to kind of pass on that one. Has doesn't quite blow me away. Uh, Lost Boys, absolutely love it, but I'm a fan of the, the movie, so it's kind of like a no-shit Sherlock on that one. Uh, so there you go. It's, it's three reviews straight from me. Yeah. Uh, if you are interested in any of these, there's a link beneath this video. It's an affiliate link. So, uh, um... You know, you purchase through that, we do get a small percentage of that. But before you go and purchase anything through that affiliate link, you should go find your local comic book shop. There's a number, there's a link beneath this video. You can go find local shops that way. Go there first, support your local shop. Um, I'd rather you do that than give us anything. Um, yeah, also want to thank DC Comics for hooking us up, as always, with free copies for review. And, yeah, I mean, if you're into DC Comics, if you're into Cyborg, Justice League of America, comic books, The Lost Boys, whatever, you should check us out every single day at graphicpolicy.com. We're on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Tumblr, all at Graphic Policy. Um, yeah, until next time, thanks for watching. Keep on reading and keep it geeky. Hey, thanks for watching the previous video from Graphic Policy Television. Just by watching, you help support our site. Thank you so much. Now, if you're watching these videos, you probably care about geeky things like movies, television, comic books, toys, games, video games, you name it. You can go and subscribe right now to our YouTube channel to stay in touch and catch all the new videos, or check out our website at graphicpolicy.com. There's a nice link on this end of the video. But as always, thank you for watching. Keep on rocking and keep it geeky.